So my native acquaintance of mine from Minnesota told me some spooky stories on Halloween and one was decent, to know if they were true but he says they were. Be native friend few years back. Mid-November light snow on the ground. Lives in the Red Lake Rees northern Minnesota in a trailer with mom, drunk stepdad and a few sisters. Fenced in with backyard leading to tree area with a lab and a pit bull. Out of nowhere dogs start going haywire. Annan's playing games in his room. Anon come out here. Stepdad yells. Goes to living room where drunk stepdad's watching TV on his recliner. Anon go see what's fucking with my mutts. Alcoholic stepdad has him go check what's up. Probably just a stray fucking with his dog. Most reservations have a stray dog problem hard as fuck. Takes a shitty 20 gauge. Outside dogs are barking and growling at the trees but no dog outside of the fence visible. Calms down dogs but they were still in fight or flight mode. May. Starts heading back to the trailer. And on go see what's fucking with our mutt. Same way drunk stepdad set it down to the slur comes from behind him, not from the trailer. Anon come out here. Again same way. Shouts back that it was nothing before walking in. Stepdad's passed out in recliner. May, goes to bed. Dogs kept barking till he fell asleep. Wakes up to a livid stepdad. Ranting about his pit bull slick and how Anon said he checked what they were barking at. Obviously you didn't. And gestures to the window facing the backyard. Blood on the snow looking like one of the dogs was dragged to the woods. Lab has a broken leg and a big three clawed scratch down its side cut deep. Pit bull nowhere to be found even in the woods outside the house. No tracks but they figure it's a bear or wolves. Gets grounded and the lab was so injured it had to be put down. He has a few more spooky stories those woods but nothing this freaky deaky. They put out their traps but never got anything. Up here I have another story connected to natives in Minnesota. So backstory Cheyenne got along running beef with the Sioux, I'm one fourth Sioux, of the Great Plains due to wars a long time ago. Sioux were pretty brutal they were the ones scalping and such and always portrayed as dicks like in dances with wolves. This happened on a Cheyenne res. Family of three a Cheyenne mother, a Sioux stepdad, and the four year old Cheyenne daughter. Stepdad's an outsider who just moved but at this point nobody really cares about the whole Sioux beefs. Daughter keeps having vivid nightmares and screaming about some old woman with braids. One day mother leaves daughter in the tub while she goes to answer a phone call. Kids playing with toys and is fine. The door suddenly slams and locks somehow. Child starts screaming like one of her night terrors about the old braided woman. Mother starts slamming on the door to no avail. Child's still screaming and she hears thrashing in the tub. Gets down on her stomach to see through the bottom of the door what's happening. She sees a large pair of feet covered in mud and leaves too big to be her daughter's. Screaming suddenly stops. Stepdad comes and breaks the door and the child's just sitting in the tub with a blank stare. They travel to the local witch doctor of sorts to see what's up. After a while with the child he thinks he might know what's going on. Talks about how it seems one of her ancestor spirits is very angry with one of their decisions. Says the spirit is rambling about Sue if that means anything. Stepdad and mother go pale. Take the child back home and the explainable events continue with the shed catching fire and the child's night terrors. Child keeps getting paler and more silent by the day going without food and not speaking. Eventually the stepfather decides to move on and hopes this will help the family. Goes back to southeastern South Dakota after saying his goodbyes. After he leaves the night terrors stop and the child goes back to her happy self. I'm originally from the White Earth Indian Reservation in Minnesota I have a few spooky stories. People see ghosts all the time where I'm from. Chair M Minnesota people always got the best shit. Alright. Be me. B15. At home playing video with lil bro and cousin. Mom and dad are staying a few nights at the casino. No one else is there but us. About 2 in the morning we're all up still playing PS3. Out of nowhere, we hear three loud thumbs. Sounding like someone pounding on the wall with a fist. We get up walk around. Hear a sound coming out of the downstairs bathroom. Go down there. It's pitch black downstairs. Turn on all the lights. Get near the bathroom. Hear water running. Open the door. It's pitch black. The sink in the bathroom is going full blast. Turn on the lights. No one there. Get a chill down my spine. Feel like I'm being watched. We run around the house making sure all the doors were locked. They were. We turn all the lights on. Then we stayed up till sunrise. My parents came back a day later. Told them what happened. They don't believe us. This was one of many spooky things to happen in that house. 
Haha my mom now after I moved out said she can hear footsteps at night sometimes when they're in bed. She asked me to sage the house a few times. I'll join the spook story train. Be me visiting Montana. Go to a turnoff for a wooded area that locals know is good for fishing and woods fuckery. In a woods with cousin his friend Bill, Bill's girl Shelby and Bill's younger brother Noah. They have cabin and cousins 19 so we all chill there for fishing and such. October so it's pretty cold we get the fireplace going and tell stories. Right before bed we hear something slam on the door of the cabin. Go out to see what hit it and it's a dead squirrel with no head. Figure wild animals so we lock everything up and zip up all our food so no bears smell anything. Middle of the night another slam. Only me and older cousin are up. Slowly check out what it is and it's a dead possum this time cut in half. Spooked by now so he gets a 30 06 hunting rifle and stays up while I go to bed. Hear a shrill scream from the woods and human. Turn to cousin but he says it's a rabbit's death scream and to just go to bed. Wake up early still freaked out. We open the door to go outside and two dead rabbits torn up in a fox with a deer antler shoved in its abdomen. Decide this is our last day out here and cousin checks tracks but it just seems to be circular hooves prints. Cousin's friend, Bill, let's call him, is more curious than scared. Has a .22 Ruger pistol he brought to Plink and decides to go scope around with Noah. I fish some with Cousin and Shelby but we decide we're just going to pack shit up and get ready to go so we don't have to walk the path to the jeep at night. Get back and Bill's still gone but Thomas is back. Says Bill ran off after he saw some horn thing and sent him back to camp. Cousin and Shelby go off to find Bill, because we have 3 hours of day left, and me and Noah chill in the cabin. They come back with Bill like a hour later, and he looks dazed, or like in a trance. Only wearing his vest missing his shirt no gun to be found or his backpack. We found him walking near the river like this missing all his stuff. It's getting dark now and the forest is dead silent. Bill keeps saying my pack and pointing to the woods, but we all keep telling him there's no way to go find it in the dark. My pack lets go. No way Bill why'd you leave it in the first place? Blank stare. Shelby cuddles up to him and we all grub on some food. Go to bed no thumps that night on the door. Wake up early to everyone up. Cousin says he's leaving and Bill is still on that my pack ship. While I'm going to finish packing don't be too long. Me and Noah head out with them to go look for the pistol in his pack. I wanted to shoot it before we went back home. We get to where they found Bill and he sorta of just looks at me and Noah for a while. Uh, Bill where do you leave it last? Blank stare. He sorta of just gestures further at the woods off trail. Uh, you boys go back I guess I'll help him find it. Shelby says annoyed. Me and Thomas start heading back when we see my cousin on the trail. He shouts to Bill. I got our stuff all packed up we're going to head back. I'll take Noah back home if you want. Bill sorta of just holds his hand up with a cracked smile. Didn't wave just held his hand weird. Shelby shouts back that they'll search for like another hour then take their car back. Get home and play some games and chill. Bill doesn't answer, and neither does Shelby. Cousin starts getting worried now that it's dark again. And heads back alone. After a while he comes back with no Bill or Shelby. Says their car's still there and the cabin's empty. After another day of no reply from Bill game, wardens are contacted and begin a search. A week goes by, no Shelby, no Bill. They find Bill's shirt he left the first day torn along with his backpack with all its stuff spilt all over an area a half mile from the path. Nothing of Shelby's is found. I went back home to Colorado but from what I've heard from talking with my cousin a while after they found Shelby's had a week later with a little blood in it sitting on a tree stump next to a dead possum. Bill and Shelby are assumed to be dead after the search went cold and the Montana mountains get pretty harsh in the fall months. Story from the Reservation in Minnesota be my friend. Be little kid. My friend is outside playing with other kids. They play tag and hide and go seek. They run all around the neighborhood. They get near the edge of the neighborhood. There's a big hill covered in trees and shrubs on the edge of the woods. There's a faint overgrown path in the grass leading up it. The kids head up the trail. They get to the top. There is a clearing between the trees. Looks like old campground. They look around. There's skeletons of dead deer and other animals everywhere. They hear a faint sound. Sounds like drums in the distance. Like a ceremonial drum our people use. They get a weird feeling. They notice there's things hanging in the trees. Looks like some shit out of the Blair Witch Project he said but there was feathers and deer skulls. They hear twigs breaking in the woods. Sounds big. Sounds like it's coming right for them. They run and scream out of there. They run down the hill. Across the street to a friend's house. His little sister is crying because she's so scared. 
The friend's mom asked what's wrong. They told them what happened. The mom said, When I was little all the elders would say not to go on that hill. The elders said there was a man living up there. This man was a witch. He practiced bad medicine. He would place curses on people. He even was suspected for multiple murders. At night if you were near the hill, you could hear growls and loud shrieks. Sometimes you could see red eyes looking at you from the woods. Some people report seeing a monster. It looks like a deer at first. Then it stands up on its hind legs. It has the body of a woman. With long black hair. Red eyes. Fangs. And claws. It then growls at you. Then it starts to chase you. They said it sounds like it's right behind you. You could feel its breath on your neck. The people would scream and cry. Eventually they'd not hear it. They'd look back at it would be gone. Eventually the local medicine man investigated the area. He said there is strong evil presence on the hill. He said there's nothing he can do about it. Said the evil has seeped into the earth there. It's part of the ground. It's an unholy sanctuary for bad spirits. He said during the day it loses some power. But at night he said you must never go up there. Especially all by yourself. He said he put tobacco out at the site. He said the only thing he can do is sage our homes. And use tobacco and pray for our health and safety. Anyway after that it was well known never to go up on that hill. The stupid tribal government built a house with a hill in the backyard. The house was notoriously haunted. People would move out right away. Anyway eventually the house was abandoned. A spiritual advisor. Investigated the house. She took pictures everywhere. There was a small crawl space in the basement under the stairs. She took a picture there. In the picture is what appears to be a creature with a small human body. A dog head instead of a human head. And deer horns on top. The picture is floating around the res. Eventually the house burns down. No one knows why. They condemn the site. The hill is still there. I've seen the picture. You can barely see it it's so transparent. But you can see it. It sends shivers down your spine. I'll look for the photo and upload it for you guys. The head looked similar except the horns were smaller, and it looked like a ghost. Another story from the res. Be me. Be 16. Be at cousin's house. It's a two-bedroom cabin on the lake in the middle of nowhere. It's the middle of summer. A rainy and cloudy day. My auntie and her BF leave. They usually go to the bar and are gone all night. It's just me my older cousin and my younger cousin. Youngest one is like 14. We sit in my cousin's room. We play video games and smoke pot. It starts to get dark. It starts to thunderstorm. The fucking power goes out. We're just sitting in the dark. Go find some flashlights. The storm gets worse. We just sit there forever talking and laughing. Out of boredom we decide to tell scary stories. Spend what seems like forever telling scary stories to each other. Storm dies down. Still no power thou. Start to hear noises in the house. May, it's a old cabin. Out of nowhere we hear what sounds like a dog growling in the kitchen. We don't own a dog. My cousins start freaking out. My lil cousin starts staring up. My older cousin stands up. He yells, Get out of my house. You are not welcome here. We hear a howling wind. Sounds like the wind crashed into the bedroom door. I'm frozen with fear. Me and my lil cousin are huddled together on the bed. The lights turn on. Power is back on. We all walk into the kitchen slash living room. Nothing is there. All the doors and windows are locked. Get freaked out. We start blowing up my aunt's cell phone. She doesn't answer. We stay up all night. We keep all the lights on. My older cousin says, I didn't want to scare you guys earlier, but I've seen a massive shadow at the end of my bed one night. I was frozen with fear. But I started screaming in my head then eventually out loud. I said get out. Leave me alone. And it did. Next day my auntie comes home. My cousin bitches at her for not answering. Tell her what happened. She believes us. Says. I'm sorry son. I'll get us some sage today. She didn't have cell service. She really didn't have cell service. No one gets cell service on the res. Anyway. I go back to my cozy safe home that day. My cousin and auntie sage their house down. Our local medicine man tells them to hang cedar above the doors. He'll smoke the pipe later and pray for them. They never had a spooky problem in that house again. They move a couple years later because the cabin is falling apart. I've seen a big shadow a couple years later in my room. Random spooky things keep happening to me every few years. May, thus is life. My whole family believes in ghosts and spirits.